Good afternoon, Peter Hanning with Best Defense Concepts, and today I'm here at J.P. Wood Martial Arts doing an interview with Grandmasters Jan and John Wood. Thank you very much for joining me. Appreciate it. Thank Welcome. You, Peter. Uh, so the first thing I want to ask you is about, uh, before this we were doing, I was doing a demonstration of a new technology conduct electro weapon called the glove. I was curious what you guys thought about it, just your thoughts. I, <laughs> yes. you got a chance to see what I thought of it. I was uh, grabbing my saw yeah. a different place. I even hit Tried my it on forehead. your forehead, and I understand that was so quite that a it intense. It was a very, very good experience okay. to feel. Uh, yeah, I think, you know what, it, it combines what they say martial arts is about, in the sense martial arts is used the least amount of effort to get the maximum result. Sure. And I mean, it's a great idea that you can get a great result without being overly aggressive with someone, uh, possibly injurious, you know, you can uh, accomplish a lot that mm -hmm. way. I like the way it's uh, helping the law enforcement, but it's not um, uh, causing potential damage or something. To, yeah. Right. You know. it's, it's really good for both sides of it, mm -hmm. right? Because you're trying to make it easier on both people, right? You don't want to have mm -hmm. to cause more injury than you need to when you're taking someone into custody or Absolutely. trying to control Just them. Do, the, the, right. do what you need to do to accomplish your goal. You don't have to, you don't have to overkill. Right, yeah. exactly. So agree 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jan, I would start with you. So can you tell me how you got involved with the martial arts? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> I think John's going to like this answer. Okay. That's a simple one. I was bored, had nothing to do, and my sister came home from a health club one day. She told me there was a cute guy teaching karate. Ah, okay. And she said, I think I would like it. So I said, okay, I'll go there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, apparently I signed up for the lifetime uh, martial arts <laughs> membership. Okay, so very that's nice. That's how it started. It was, okay. it was fun, it was cool, and I never you know, envisioned myself um, continuing this long, but okay. apparently that li lifetime <laughs> <laughs> membership. So mm -hmm. prior to that, you hadn't done any martial arts? No. Okay. No, was, so. She had, luckily, that uh, Russian class got canceled. Yeah, actually, I had signed up ah, for, for uh, I wanted to continue my Russian studies. Okay. And it got canceled, and I was like, gosh, I can't find any. I was just looking for something to do. I just okay. graduated, and, well. Funny how life works, right? Yeah. So, right. so, John, how about yourself? Well, I started, well, basically, I got started back when I was about 15 years old because of the Kung Fu TV show. Ah, okay. Okay, I was David a Kung Carradine. Fu wannabe, okay. and David Carradine was a... Uh, and I, you know, I basically took some classes at like YMCA's and, and stuff like that. Now, uh, from there, when I started college, I got more involved in, uh, uh, more and more involved. So when I was in high school, I was doing a little bit at this place, this place, because I was kind of forging my parents' signature so to sign <laughs> up. Okay. okay? But then as I got a little bit older, uh, and I was of legal age, okay. I uh, signed up for some Taekwondo classes and got going, continuing on there. So that was like the mid-late uh, 70s. Okay. And then uh, we, uh, I just kept continuing on, continuing on. Okay, and I, you know, studied Taekwondo, Hapkido, uh, Gumdo, uh, and then Eskrima you know, was or Eskrima and Kali, that type of stuff. It was uh, part of what I was studying. When I first started out, it was like karate classes, jujitsu classes, okay. Okan, you know, like Okinawan karate and jujitsu. So what was it about? So, you know, clearly your school here focuses on the Korean arts, Taekwondo, Gumdo, Hapkido. What was it about those arts that drew you to those rather than some of these other arts? Uh, it wasn't necessarily the, I like the game. Okay. I like the the uh, the style of taekwondo game. Okay. Okay, and I call it a game because you have referee and judges. Right. Okay. Um, compared to the I and I like the traditional arts, taekwondo. You know, the heritage back prior, uh, or I should say the the lineage that I follow is actually. Uh, Shotokan karate style. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's also uh, Shudokan, Shudokan and Shotokan. So my lineage goes back 
like okay. a tree, you know, because my, my immediate teacher had one grandmaster. Okay. When he died, we were with another grandmaster. Okay. okay. And then, you know, through falling out and stuff like of that. Course. So political yeah. stuff. Thing always, always happens, yeah. yep. So we have a kind of a eclectic uh, system okay. due to the fact that we had this system here and this system there. Okay. okay. Oh, interesting. So, Jan, now you have three sons who are also involved in the martial arts, right? So are they involved in teaching at the school? Uh, they are not uh, quite as much as when they were in high school and college. They, uh, they all started when they were like three years old. Wow. We had, yeah. a, we had to kick our one son out. He was too crazy. <laughs> no. no, when he was three years old, he was too wild. But um, they all attended, you know, regularly through grade school, high school, college. I mean, they were involved in other sports and activities too. Okay. They would teach for us in the summer when they were home on break, teach the camps and the classes. Our one son did a satellite program for us when he was in high school, so that was his job. So okay. uh, now our oldest son will still uh, help out and do some lessons and some private training. Um, and our middle and youngest, just our youngest is still on our demonstration team. Okay. And uh, the middle comes yeah. here. He works out a lot with his wife. Uh, that's nice. how they met. Oh, they okay. met here at the school. Great. So nice story. yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we, we love that. We've had a couple marriages through the school, so it's very cool. Yeah. Very nice to hear. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're still involved. They come to different, you know, we do other activities and things like that. They'll be part of yeah. it. And uh, they still practice and everything. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Well, glad to hear that. So as far as the school goes, when did you open it? Well, we moved, uh, we moved to Illinois here uh, in 1986 okay. uh, to close down my school in Cleveland that I ran for about eight years. Oh, wow. Okay. Then... About 87 is when we opened up and we were at the Charlie Club at the time for a little bit. And then from the Charlie Club, we went to the YMCA for a little okay. bit, then over to our house for about three or four years. Okay. Then we moved into a location up at uh, uh, just a couple miles north of here. Okay. We were there for about seven, eight years, and then we were here for the last 21 years now. Oh, it's a long so, time. Okay. So basically, we've been in Illinois since 1987. Okay. Teaching. Okay. So it's like. Was was it hard closing down your original school? Uh, I I didn't close it down. I okay. kind of sold it back oh, to my okay. teacher, and then he took it from there. Well, that's good. So at least those students are able to continue on with their instruction, mm -hmm. right? So okay. So uh, what are the classes that you're offering here? Now, I think you mentioned some of them. Can you tell us a little bit about what they are? You want to uh, well, so we have our preschool, kindergarten, martial arts. Uh, so we start age three. Um, currently, we're not teaching the three-year-olds during okay. the COVID time. but Hard to make them higher. socially distanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have you know, activity and curriculum classes for the youngest kids, the four and five years old. Some are ready for more curriculum focused and learn set self-defense and forms. Uh, some kids need, you know, more of the activity, just working on the mm. kick strikes blocks. Uh, so, you know, they choose their path and then some, when they're five or six years old, they're ready for a more structured program. Okay. Um, but we do have some kids that do really well in the structure program right at four. Mm -hmm. But uh, we call them our dragons when they're in their structure. So those are our uh, kindergarten through, uh, well, preschool, four through first grade kindergarten, first grade, depending on when they're ready to go to our junior family classes. Okay. So we have our family martial arts. Uh, we have our teen and adult martial arts. Uh, the arts it's our taekwondo. So the, the family taekwondo, uh, which is all ages, or you can go strictly to the teen adult um, taekwondo classes. Okay. And we have our sword classes, gumdo. So yeah, it's cor Korean yeah, cor sword. Yeah, Korean style sword. Uh, that's basically for 11 and older. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we have oh, our. A full, I'll just yeah. mention that's a full martial arts, just like Taekwondo. So you do forms, self defense, that has this version of sparring and, and breaking and cutting. So it's it follows just like you would have another martial art, but using the sword. Okay. And then we work on our Hapkido program that you've gone through. Uh, Looking forward to its return. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> okay. We have so. our lightsaber classes, our, which is kind of like a, four, a fun sword class. 
Okay. Yeah. The lightsaber class is set up to take the systems of uh, from the uh, Jedi okay. and and let let the people learn a little bit about how the sword works or how the lightsabers work. Although we don't have real uh, three foot <laughs> plasma torches. That's good to know. <laughs> uh, uh, but then it teaches some of that fundamental. Uh, movement and then a lot of those people have actually gone from that program into our sword program okay uh, because they have a general understanding they see that it's fun and mm -hmm. swinging a sword around is just plain cool <laughs> okay but so we we kind of we kind of build off of that fun aspect but also it, we're actually teaching people how to use a sword okay okay uh, and uh, what's important is the safety aspect of it. So they of learn to respect it. I have been, like, for years I was a carpenter. For years I was, uh, and I have all my fingers. <laughs> I have never cut my hand on my sword okay. because I have a lot of respect for bladed weapons. And so, um, you know, so it's one of those things where uh, it, it's important to have that respect Absolutely. You know, so that's that's what we if you, do. And if you can and respect have, the practice tool, then clearly you'll have more respect for when you actually move up to something that's uh, a bladed, sharp. You always mm -hmm. have to be treating right, it so. as if it is a yeah. bladed weapon, holding on to it, not letting it fall out of your scabbard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we do some specialty or um, uh, seminars. You know, we have our demonstration team training, and we have our instructor team training. We do weapon seminars like bow, our knees, nunchucks. And then uh, we do self-defense seminars. So okay. probably one of my um, most fulfilling aspects, besides like seeing the kids grow and, and mature and, and gain physically and mentally, uh, doing the female self-defense seminars. So love doing those, teaching them some mm -hmm. common um, awareness, avoidance, mm -hmm. how to breathe, how to communicate, and how to successfully defend yourself. So. Yeah. So love that part. And those seem pretty well attended. I mean, I've seen video and uh, pictures of those classes. They seem like you have quite a few people that show yes, for them. We've had, we've had good success with, uh, unfortunate, there's that demand for it. But, yeah. but it's some, a lot of it's just being smart. It's just they, you know, a lot of parents just want to have that street smartness to their, their daughters going off, you know, sure. to college and not be, you vulnerable. overly trust people. Yeah. Not yeah. be vulnerable and just be aware and know how to react. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, have you had people show up for that class who have been, you know, maybe perhaps the victim of a situation and then they've decided now they're going to be yeah, more proactive? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when you have questions, you'll kind of know right away. They'll say, what will you do if someone grabs your one hand, puts their hand around your mouth on the other, mm -hmm. and they're uh, maybe six foot six and I'm five foot, wow. you know? Okay. Yeah. So, and, you know, you'll have, what if someone traps you against a, a chair, you can't leave and, you know, you know, or like, what if you're laying in bed and you wake up and someone's over you, you know? Okay. So you feel, you feel very bad for them and you yeah. can see it's hard for them to ask those questions, but it's important. It's an important part of healing for them to feel empowered that they can do something and give them some sense of what they can do in the future mm -hmm. um, to protect themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I want to teach in the, those types of classes as well. Part of it is dispelling sort of um, misconceptions about self-defense. You know, a lot of people will come and they'll say, well, you know, I've been told that if I fight back, I'm going to get hurt more, you know, and so, you know, isn't it better not to fight back? And so trying to dispel some of those and teaching people that, you know, not doing something is often not the best choice. I mean, there's waiting and trying to find a good time to do something, but you have to have the ability and understand that you do have to fight back at some point. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize how much tools, you know, the body is full of all kinds of tools. And maybe if someone's grabbing you or choking you, that's a terrible thing. But think about it. Their hands are tied up. You've got your hands, your feet, your knees. You've got right. so many options. But they don't know. And as soon as they realize, it's a good, it's a good thing that they know they can do. An eye-opener, right? And I'm glad to hear that your classes are well attended. So, Now, as one of the big events that you have, which I don't think you were able to have this year, was the Samurai Games, right? Tell right. us a little bit about that. So what does that well, involve? The Samurai Games is a combination of what was, uh, well, back in the uh, mid-80s, 90s, uh, they started a thing out of Korea, a tournament out of Korea called the Hanmadong. Okay, which is, means Korean festival. 
but they would it was a it was a taekwondo hanmadong and it started out as a, a college demonstration team tournament oh, okay. so they would have breaking demonstration competitions they would have uh, self-defense competitions they would have forms competitions uh, things like that there was no sparring involved in it okay so it was just all these like uh, how many times can you in 30 seconds how many times how many boards can you break with the spin kick okay and things like that so um, uh, back when they first introduced uh, the Hanmadong tournament into the United States uh, I went and got certified as a referee, as an international Hamadong referee, okay. and started refereeing at those competitions. Uh, and with that, I saw a lot of things that I liked, mm -hmm. so I created the Samurai Games. Okay. okay. Uh, the difference is the Samurai Games is a combination of the, uh, the Hamadong style event but also we have sword sparring, and we we included uh, the the gumdo, okay. okay, and we also included the uh, the padded taekwondo, short. yeah, padded short stick, padded short, and we also started a couple years ago started introducing uh, the short stick, the padded stick okay. uh, competition, and uh, that was being headed up by uh, Guru Edie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. And, so the kind of cool so, thing about the competition is that it plays on everyone's strengths. And so yeah. you might be how high you can kick. Someone okay. might have the flexibility. How many boards you can break with a single strike, you know, the power. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Fast kicking. Some of those are the really fast, you know, okay. fast people. Uh, the jump high kicking. Some people have those well, natural bounce in their, you know, yeah. in their yeah. legs. Um, some don't. Some that like eye hand coordination, you know, you're thrusting to your target. Can you or, hit that target? Or the different cutting competitions. Okay. And then we have a little Things warrior like course, you know, your agility and, and everything. And that, yeah, the, the, we put in a, one of the things we added was a uh, obstacle course, an obstacle fitness course. Okay. And surprisingly, we would have 75% of the people co compete in that event wow. alone. Wow, okay. And it was just like, People like to do, I guess, the ninja. Yeah, that's the pretty ninja, popular. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, American Ninja Warrior right. came into play there. Yeah, so well, these events are just, it was a competition that we, we started out as a competition that would help beginner level students and people who don't compete a lot okay. uh, to start learning more about competition. And then we would have the preliminaries and then the people who would, earn their gold medals right. to go to the finals. Okay. Okay. And we would have a grand champions being able to be, uh, so it allows people to, to learn about competition, sure. learn how to have fun at competition, learn, you know, when we come to uh, uh, demonstrating in front of others, uh, the basic stage fright that people yeah. get, get them past that so they can become more professional when it comes time to be at school, be at work, things like that, sure. so they can have that confidence. So that's what the competition itself helps people with, you know, building up that confidence and not being afraid to be out in front of people. Right. Yeah, so it gives you uh, the different options. Some people love the sparring, some people don't. So right. there's lots of options. And and it you're, you're judged relative to your own performance, not okay. others. Okay. So it's not the idea of that the luck of the draw. Oh my gosh, I, I this I was put with so and so right, and so right. and so, but you find out, you know, being in front of people, watching you, judging you, that's a scary thing. But like I said, it's a, it's a great thing yeah. to to be able to overcome and have the confidence yeah. for. And then you find out how you did relative to you. Right. Yeah. Good because thing. and and the reason it, it works like that is because a lot of the competitions are standard based. It's kind of like if you watch pole vaulters. Mm -hmm. They come up and even though people are competing against each other, they're all cheering for each other so because it pushes the next guy. Okay, okay so if I jump 15 feet, well, 15-6 is up there, we all gotta make 15-6. Right. Or 16-6 or 17-6, like that. So it pushes that whole group forward. Okay. Just like jumping high kick or just like flying sidekick, 
or just like fast kicking, things like that. You know, it causes, it's a standard. So if you get so many kicks in, right. you earn a bronze or so many to get silver or so many to get gold. Okay. Sorry, was that supposed to be a short answer? <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, it was a very general uh, response, so that's good because I was curious about it. So for people who don't know about it, and I, I know you guys publicize it a great deal when it's going on, so anyone mm -hmm. is interested, you know. It sounds like other schools compete. Is that is right? Right. We bring, well? we have brought in people from uh, six to seven states. Oh, wow. Okay. For this competition. Anywhere from Texas, uh, we've had people come in from uh, the East one, Coast. Yeah. Oklahoma, we have Texas, our, okay. yeah. Florida. And, and it's obviously so big that you're not holding it in the school, you're holding it at the park district facilities now, right? Yes. So. Yeah. And in the fall time, we do a miniature version of it for our, uh, for our up to eighth grade, for our okay. younger kids and that. It's kind of like an in-house tournament. Okay. And, uh, you know, we do, yeah, that's just a fun practice one for them so that in the springtime they can compete in the, in the bigger one. Thank you.